Hello everyone. So today we are here to continue our uh, series on stamping. Today we will be taking you through a few watercolor stamping techniques using distress inks, distress oxides as well as a few zig markers. These are zig clean color real brush markers and they come in various sets. These are water based markers so it's fun to use them for uh, water coloring. We will be using different kinds of papers to do this. So this is a watercolor paper and like you can see we have already done a few samples to just test. This is a cardstock which is around 350 gsm in thickness. This one is a 250 gsm cardstock and this one is an ivory sheet. So this is the MISTI tool that we introduced you to in our last video. So we will be using this for all our stamping today. Now let's begin. Let, let's first use this ivory sheet and um, just use a part of it to do some stamping. So let's arrange it on our misty so that it doesn't move around and adhere the magnets to hold it in place. Now, let's see, I'm going to use one of Tim Holtz butterfly for this one. I'm just putting it face down on my paper and lifting it with the tool. So let's see, now for this we'll use distress, uh, maybe we'll use zig markers for this technique. And I'm just going to use three shades uh, going from a brighter pink to a purple. So I want to make my center a bit dark. So I'm just going to add the color onto the center first on the surface of the stamp. And as you can see, then I'm just doing it very quickly and just like a brush since this pen has a brush tip. So I'm just sort of doing strokes and then I take the next medium color from where I stopped the purple. And I'm going darker to lighter so from the inside of the butterfly. and end with the lightest shade on the wings, edges of the wings. So first we'll just take an image as it is. So this is what I've got as of now. And I'm just going to reposition it on my paper and this time I'm going to mist it with water. So I'm just going to add some more color like the first time. And with Misty, the thing is that at some places, if I've left adding color, I can always go back and do that without any hassle. I could have done that in the first stamped image, but I'm just going to show it to you with a slightly misted version. So I'm just adding my lightest shade of pink on the edges of the wings. And now using a spray bottle, just gonna spray it with water and then stamp it. So I'm just giving it a nice push and wow, that's the effect we've got now. 
and it, it's a great watercolor effect we've achieved so i'm just going to quickly dry it with the heat tool so that the colors set there that's done leave it aside and now there's always some pigment left so you could just spray in a little more water and use another piece of paper and lift it instead of wasting what you already have so i'm just gonna press the paper on to the butterfly this time and it's it's a very faded ghosty effect but it's great when you're using in uh, layering projects I'm just going to wipe it with a wet wipe okay let's try using the distress inks now so for this i'm going to use a nice background stamp and this is by a uh, peekaboo it's called swirly time so i'm just going to use this and we'll try it on the 250 gsm cardstock so i'm just going to place my cardstock on the misty i think it's a big piece i might need a smaller one so i'll just cut it to the size of the stamp so let's just position the piece of cardstock Place my stamp and lift it with the misty. Okay. Now for this one, I'm just going to do like a gradation of color. So I'm going to use mustard seed, calf pumpkin, and candied apple, and very lightly just tap the ink onto your stamp. I'm just going in with the second color, just under the mustard seeds, so you get a good blend as well. And lastly, the candied apple. And I'm just going to very lightly mist this with the water spray, and from a distance, I think you couldn't see that in the video. So this was the distance, and I'm just going to. Press it onto my paper. Okay, so that's quite a cool watercolor effect that we've got with this stamp. So these are very good to use as a backdrop for a card or. anything now there's always pigment left over so you could just again slightly mist it and uh, take another image maybe I'll do it on this ivory sheet this time you'll get a very light image it's just going to be like a slightly ghosted look but that again is a really good one to Use for your projects. So this is done, and I'm just going to clean my stamp before I pack it back. So with this one, I'm just go also going to show you how the distress oxides work with the same stamp. Or maybe let's pick a different one. Okay, I'll just. Yeah, let's let's pick a different one for this. So for this one, we'll use the Lacy Scrolls Original Stamp, and I'm going to do it on this thicker cardstock, the 350 GSM one. So I'm just cutting a smaller piece. just positioning it into the misty and i'll arrange my flower so i'm just going to do a flower first and then 
maybe add in more images so for this i'm using the distress oxide let's see i'll use the bone lipstick and then maybe wilted violet so i'm adding a little color to the center and i'll go with the wilted violet onto the sides now for with distress oxides um, sometimes they when you're going over a second color they do pick it up on your ink pad but it's really simple you can just wipe it off with a clean cloth and uh, the color comes out so you don't have to worry about contamination and i'm just going to slightly very lightly mist it once and i'm going to take a image out of it so that's what we've got a great watercolor effect and with the oxides once as it dries you can see the oxidization as well so let's probably just heat set it a little bit and that's what we've got so that's another great watercolor uh, effect that you can achieve with these uh, distress oxides I'm just going to clean my stamp and <clears throat> maybe just show you another uh, swirl here with the oxides this one let's see i'll use uh, broken china and these you can see are very juicy and milky so they instantly are visible on your stamp as you put them so let's lightly mist it the more you miss the more oxidized look you get but that's good enough for us so that's what we've got with this and i still have some pigment left on that so i'll lift it on a smaller piece maybe mist it a little more and that's a very easy image that we've got but these are really great when you're making a project and you want to layer elements so you can just use these underneath and few more on top so that's a great effect we've got now uh, let's try some a few on this watercolor pad and i'm just going to do a few maybe butterflies on this I'm using the Kaiser Craft stamp for this one. Really love these butterflies with some nice texture and design on that. Just placing them on my uh, paper, and I'm using all three for this one. Let's see what we get. So, lift it on my misty slider. And uh, shall we use? We really, let's try. Let's use these uh, three shades of zig markers: green going into like a blue. And I'll probably start with the green in the center for the first one, going a little towards the edges. And the next shade. And the last color on the top. I'm just going to mist it lightly. And that's what we've got on this watercolor paper pack. So that's a nice image there. I'm just going to quickly dry it. Let's try the next one. So for the next one, maybe I'll use some distress inks, and the third one I'll use the oxides. So let's see. I'll pick this and um, I'll use mustard seeds, just slightly dab in the center. And the carved pumpkin on the edges, 
and again I'm going to very lightly miss this to activate that and give it a nice press so that's another wonderful butterfly watercolor effect that we've achieved quickly just give this a draw I'm going to clean it and use the last one uh, with this one I'll use the oxides so just place it there and I'm going to use wilted violet towards the center and just go over with broken china on the edges very lightly Miss that and then I'm just going to get an image on my paper and that's another lovely watercolor effect that we've got so even the watercolor paper is really good when you're doing these sort of watercolor stampings because you don't get a defined edge but you get a really nice watercolor effect and um, that's really good for a lot of projects especially for card making and stuff now I'm just going to show you another last technique with this and then probably we'll just cut and assemble a few pieces to make a card so oh two more techniques actually so I'm just using this um, 250 JSON cardstock and for this one I'll use one of these uh, birds from Tim Holtz bird crazy collection let's see this one maybe and uh, I'm just placing it on my misty now for this one I'm using a darker color and I'm just going over the outline uh, like you can see this is an outline stamp it's not a solid stamp so we would uh, need to fill it with color later on so I just use this uh, aged mahogany and I'm just giving a light spritz and I'm going to stamp that on my paper so this has given me a very nice watery outline now I'm just going to sort of heat set this and uh, go in with some colors I've not completely dried it I've just sort of done it so that you know it doesn't spread too much and now I'm using this water brush which is just a sort of paint brush which has a storage underneath where you can fill water and uh, use it for this watercolor technique so I'm going to use this and slowly from the edges pull the color in towards the center so it's the same color that I'm going to use and just fill color in into the bird. So I want the center, uh, I want the edges dark. So I'm just first pulling the color from there and then I'm going to take it in towards the center and gradually as you see the, as the color stop pulling, it gets lighter. And I don't have to put in a lot of effort for this. It just picks in the pigment from there and moves as I move my brush. And that's it. My image is colored. So this is a really cool uh, technique that you can use. Again, a very fast and easy one for most of your focal elements. So I'm just going to leave it aside to dry and let's see I'm going to pick this uh, 350 GSM cardstock and I'll just cut a smaller piece to show you the last technique. I'll just put a small panel. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, spritz it with some water first 
to moisten the paper and then just going to take out these distress inks and using my water brush apply it to create a nice background so I've just spritzed that with water and let's see I'm going to use a carved pumpkin candied apple you could use your craft mat for this uh, I just have a plastic sheet here under my work surface so I'm using that and a barn door so I'm just going to spritz no, I'm not going to I'm just going to pick them up with my watercolor brush and just give it a nice wash and as there's already water on the paper as well as in my water brush you can see how the color is moving so I'm just going to go on to the next color and take that in just giving it a nice wash and spreading it without much effort as the water does all the trick and now I'm just going in with the third darker color I'm not going all the way till my edges because later maybe I can trim the panel and use it as a backdrop maybe for a card so let's see I'm just going to first dry this to see if I have enough color Now this is what we've got. If I need more vibrancy, I'm just going to mist it again with water and go in with the color. So I'm just adding more where both the colors meet so that it gives me a great blend. And I think I'm happy with that. And as you can see, I have some color left over here and I don't want to waste that. So I'm just going to mist that and probably pick it up on pieces of cardstock that I have here Oops. just going to lift it heat set that And then this is again an instant watercolor background that you have for your uh, projects. Just going to clean this remaining. And now there are two things that you could do. So once you've created such swatches with color gradation, you could just stamp your image with black uh, permanent ink like archival ink onto this so your image is already colored and cut it out. Or if, if this is your background, again you could just stamp your image there and leave it as your image is going to already be colored. So I'm just going to get this dried a bit and show you that as well. So with this one you can see when I spritzed it with water so it's given us great tiny water droplets there and it's just adding some more texture to that background. So on this now I'll just use one of these birds and I'm going to ink them up with black archival ink. Now since it's just a single bird I'll use my acrylic block for this one. Ink it up nicely with the black archival ink and stamp it on this one so there you go the bird is now colored and you've got some shading and some cool textures as well so now maybe I'm just gonna cut a few of these pieces that we've uh, just stamped and uh, come back <coughs> to show you uh, 
how we just put together all this and create maybe uh, an ATC card. ATC cards are artist trading cards and uh, we'll be using, we'll be creating one maybe in uh, 3 by 4 inches size. Okay, so I'm back. So I just cut out this background from what we stamped on the cardstock and the same one from the watercolor paper pad as well as a few of these butterflies. These were with the zig markers. So I used the three shades of pink and this is again with the zig markers. So now I'm just on a piece of this watercolor paper, I stamped a coat and now uh, since it's watercolor paper you won't get a clear image i uh, went over it with this uniball uh, black pen just to darken my uh, coat so now i'm just gonna cut this coat out as well to shape I have uh, got chipsifier and wilted violet because I want to distress the edges. So with my blending tool, I'm going to do that and I'm going to distress all the edges over here. So let's see, I'm going to do half and half maybe. Um, starting with the chipsifier, just going over this and this edge over here. And I'll use the wilted violet for the remaining two edges. So that's going to be the base of my ATC card. And um, this is a leftover from this. So I'm going to use this in the layering. So again, let's just distress the edges. That's done, maybe a little color to the edges of these uh, butterflies after they've been fussy cut. So this particular stamp of Kaiser Craft, uh, the butterflies are extremely textured and they don't have a well-defined outline. So when you fussy cut them, you're bound to sort of go in and out of the design. But the best part is they don't have antlers. so. You don't have to really worry when you're cutting them. Just lightly edging them. And even my uh, coat, I'm going to distress that. Distressing really gives a nice border so your piece looks complete. I'm not going to distress this particular one because I really like the white outline around the butterfly. Keep everything aside and get to assembling this. So, probably uh, I'm going to layer this piece here. And I'm using a uh, foam tape because that is going to just give it a bit of a dimension. Add this piece over here and this piece over here. So maybe I'll use foam for this and just yeah foam for this too. Ok, 
Okay, that's done. Now I have to add these butterflies. Let's see. I'm just gonna uh, sort of push them towards the center so the uh, wings look real. So the butterfly looks a bit animated. And you could just take a pencil and just curl the edges. So that gives some more dimension. do that to all the three butterflies here you could even use your shaping tools and shape them but this is just an easier method so maybe have this here and maybe have this there and this here and let's see my coat can go down here so now for the butterflies I'm just going to add some uh, fevicol right to the center and place them there so you need to Press a bit at the center so that it stays there. Just checking if this looks good here and here. Yeah, I think here also just appeals to me there. So I'll use a smaller foam tape because it's a bit outside. And quickly get that in place so there you go uh, an ATC card and this you can see was pretty quick so when you just have some stamped images like these and I really like the watercolor effect it gives instead of that defined clear edge at times this technique really works and then you just cut out the elements and put them all together to complete your ATC card it really just took me about 10 minutes to first cut everything out and maybe 2 or 3 minutes once I figured my arrangement to put everything down. So a quick card there with all the techniques that we showed you today. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and uh, we'll be back next week with something new and something different. So till then have fun and uh, have a great weekend and happy crafting.